Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our delegates to share their reflections on the Dublin Declaration. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Honourable Colm Brophy, Minister of State for Overseas Development, Aid and Diaspora of Ireland. All the distinguished ministers, ladies and gentlemen. Jamaica's history and development have been shaped by the forces of migration whether to or from the island. Outward migration began as early as the 19th century, but accelerated in the post-World War II era to countries such as the United Kingdom as part of the significant Windrush generation, as well as to the United States of America and Canada. The result of this movement is the existence of a large group of Jamaicans and their offspring who currently reside in these dias traditional diaspora regions as well as in the non-traditional regions across the globe. We proudly claim them as our Jamaican diaspora. They are a boundless reservoir of talent, skills, ingenuity and creativity and represent a significant source of human capital, skills, knowledge, and expertise, social capital, relationships, and networks, and financial capital. They are also an integral part of our brand and are strong advocates for Jamaica and Jamaicans, wherever they reside. Jamaica's diaspora has included the country's first national hero, the right, excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey, world-renowned music legends Bob Marley and Hardy Belafont, late former U.S. Secretary General General Colin Powell, and current U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris. Recognizing the importance of harnessing the potential of the diaspora and the need to ensure a mutually beneficial partnership, Objective 19 of the Global Compact for Migration highlights the need to create conditions for migrants and diasporas to fully contribute to sustainable development in all countries. This includes both their countries of origin and destination beyond remittances. The impact of the Jamaican diaspora has been twofold. Not only have they contributed to Jamaica, but also significantly the socio-economic and cultural development of their countries of residence. Government measures should, therefore, take into account practical ways of strengthening engagement on both sides. The government of Jamaica has over the years given priority attention to development of strategies to strengthen engagement with the diaspora. At the political level, a decision was taken to appoint a minister with responsibility for the diaspora, whose office is intended to be the bridge between the government and the diaspora and all matters of interest to the diaspora. Other initiatives include the establishment of a Department for Diaspora Affairs within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, the establishment of a diaspora task, of diaspora task forces and advisory councils, incentives for returning residents, arrangements for, for the return and reintegration of qualified Jamaican nationals, the establishment of structures to facilitate diaspora philanthropy, and importantly, development of a comprehensive draft national diaspora policy to further strengthen and mainstream engagement with the diaspora, including its first, second, and third generation. An important engagement mechanism is the Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference which has been the centerpiece of Jamaica's diaspora engagement process since 2004. This year's conference will be held from between June 14 and 16. At the level of host country, our Jamaican overseas missions undertake a range of activities to strengthen engagement with the diaspora. These include organizing regular community visits and cultural activities workshops and seminars on issues such as on immigration, assisting in the establishment of community networks, providing efficient consular services and advice, as well as dialogue and advocacy for the promotion and protection 
of the rights of our nationals. The missions also facilitate and coordinate with the diaspora on humanitarian efforts in times of crisis, such as hurricanes, floods, and the COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, migration must be properly governed at all levels, both in the country of origin and destination. The Windrush crisis in the United Kingdom, which received wide publicity, is an example from which we must all learn. The contributions of the Windrush generation are well known and documented. These tra trailblazing men and women who migrated to the United Kingdom on board the SS Empire Windrush in 1948 have contributed to the growth and enrichment of the British society and Jamaica, yet they were confronted with great injustices and humiliation. This should never have happened, and we should ensure that the lessons learned will assist us as governments of both origin and destination countries to be mindful of how we must treat with migrant populations. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, Jamaica commemorates its 60th anniversary of independence. This provides us with an opportunity for introspection and certainly for celebration. As a nation, we have much to celebrate, including our rich and cherished traditions, our vibrant, talented, and extraordinary people, including our Jamaican family resident abroad. They have made an indelible mark on the world in almost every field. We acknowledge with gratitude the valuable and mutually beneficial relationship that we have with our Jamaican family in the diaspora. As we seek to chart the course to build back better, stronger, and more resilient from COVID-19 pandemic, you can be assured that the government of Jamaica will continue in keeping with the Objective 19 of the Global Compact to utilize every opportunity to improve conditions so that members of the diaspora can fully contribute to the sustainable development wherever they reside. I thank you. Thank you very much, Senator, for these uh, reflections. And now we have come to the session of today. And we will uh, have an opportunity to share some reflections on the um, outcome document. As uh, DDG Daniel said, we have been, this document has been uh, uh, discussed the, these three days. It has been shared and, and discussed very broadly with, uh, through consultations ahead of uh, these three, day, three days meetings. So we are really very happy to be able to be here at this stage and so very close to the adoption. But before that, I open the floor for discussions. And I think I have, I will ask you to bear with me because I have the room and I have the screen and, <laughs> and I, I'm monitoring the uh, eventual interest to take the floor online. I think we have Turkey. We have Turkey. So, um, Turkey, you have the floor. Yes. Hi. Um, dear Minister Kohn uh, dear Deputy Director General Ugochi Daniels, um, distinguished participants, we would like to once again extend our appreciation to the IAM and the Government of Ireland for organizing this summit. As the country hosting the largest number of refugees, Turkey has actively contributed to the GCM process since the very beginning. We believe that migration is a global issue, and therefore it should be dealt globally. Uh, Turkey will continue to support and contribute to this process. Indeed, we are also looking forward to the IMRF next month, and our minister, His Excellency Çavuşoğlu, will gladly attend the forum. We have also submitted our national voluntary report. As for the Diaspora Summit, it has elaborated on one of the most important elements of migration, which could have been overlooked otherwise. Uh, and I have the pleasure to underscore our support for the outcome document of the summit. We are glad to see that some important elements from our Deputy Minister Kran's intervention are also reflected on the text. 
To conclude, as a country hosting one of the largest refugees diaspora communities and with 7 million Turks living abroad, Turkey will continue to actively contribute to the GCM process and future diaspora summits. Thank you. Thank you very much, Turkey, for this uh, positive contribution. I don't think we have, for the moment, anyone else online. At least I don't see any hand. So I open the floor for some reflections. India. Honorable Minister Kombrofi, uh, Deputy Director General IOM, Excellencies, um, I would like to express our great satisfaction at the uh, successful culmination of the Global Diaspora Summit. We are all ready to adopt the Dublin Declaration by consensus as the outcome document outlining the future agenda for global diaspora engagement. Undoubtedly, the diaspora population across the world has made significant contributions towards the development of their countries of origin, as well as the countries of residence, a fact which has been widely acknowledged. Thus, there is a greater need for international cooperation to fully comprehend and maintain engagements with them in a sustainable way. In this regard, the Global Diaspora Summit 2022 has been a visionary platform that presented us an opportunity to deliberate on the developments in the field of global diaspora engagement. As one of the leading states in the international migration dynamics, this platform has provided India with an opportunity to showcase some of the good practices from the Indian subcontinent that connect, care, and celebrate our diaspora and contribute to the growth and development. The Indian diaspora community throughout the world has been enablers of good relations between India and the rest of the world, and they have been active in, uh, uh, they have always been at forefront in times of need. The need of the hour is that strategy and policy measures aimed at betterment of our diaspora, as well as calibrated and coordinated approach, as a whole of government and whole of society approach, uh, is adopted. And this summit has seen deliberations on a range of issues, such as diaspora networks, diaspora humanitarianism, diaspora philanthropy, diaspora impact, and diaspora, digital diaspora during the two days, and involvement of members of the diaspora, government officials, and the private sector in these deliberations reflect that we are on the right path. We acknowledge and appreciate all the participants for making it a thought-provoking session, and we hope that the experiences shared has been insightful. Further, the technical working groups have fostered and highlighted some concrete recommendations on facilitating and maximizing the impact of contribution in terms of diaspora capital. As a result of this consultative approach, the GDS political outcome document comes out as a manifestation of commitment by all countries present to collaborate on the advancement of Objective 19 of the Global Compact on Migration, which is to create conditions for migrants and diasporas to fully contribute to sustainable development in all countries. With these remarks, I would like to extend my appreciation and gratitude to various participating governments and partners and also, uh, I'd like to congratulate the government of Ireland for hosting this important summit. And we stand uh, by the uh, Dublin Declaration, and uh, we will work towards the common objectives we, for which we have all gathered here today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Next on the list, I have uh, Colombia. Thank you very much. I'm going to switch to Spanish as my base language. Eh, Ministro uh, DDG, ministers, heads of the delegations, todos los compañeros de la mesa, primero, un especial saludo agradecimiento de nuestra vicepresidenta y canciller que nos ha podido acompañar estos días de trabajo, en donde creo que todos hemos aprendido muchísimas cosas. Lo segundo, felicitar al gobierno de Irlanda, no solo por una espectacular sesión de trabajo, sino por unos grandes ejemplos de materialización de la diáspora y del trabajo. Me refiero en particular a Epic Museum, absolutamente impresionante, como también a la estrategia de diáspora o ese documento que tuvimos la oportunidad de conocer ayer, que se constituye en una carta de navegación para muchos de nosotros. Solo queremos hacer 
dos comentarios adicionales desde Colombia muy en el marco de la declaración que suscribimos unánimemente. Lo primero, que no podemos olvidar que esta declaración no es un punto de destino, es un punto de partida. Con lo cual, lo que asumimos acá es un compromiso colectivo de trabajar con mayor ahínco, con mayor velocidad y en beneficio común. Y lo segundo, que ojalá nuestro pensamiento siempre esté abierto a la diáspora, pero también a la diáspora inversa. Esto es, a todos nuestros nacionales en los diferentes países, pero también a los diferentes nacionales en nuestros países. Me quedo con un mensaje espectacular que vi precisamente en Epic Museum, que dice, We all come from somewhere. Thank you very much. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Colombia. Any other? Mexico. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Profi, and thank you, OEM. I also will talk in Spanish. Latinoamérica, tenemos que... <laughs> pues yo brevemente este, salud, agradecer la organización del evento, agradecer al gobierno de Irlanda, al ministro Brofi, por todo el apoyo para hacer esto. Y también, yo también me llevo como tarea el, el tema de, del Museo de Epic, ya quisiéramos en México tener algo semejante que refleje precisamente el, el aporte y el impacto de la diáspora. Creo que vamos a pedirle luego... Un, consultoría al gobierno de Irlanda para que nos ayude a impulsar esto en México, sobre todo aprovechando que podemos conseguir buenos donantes en México, sobre todo de irlandeses de las familias O'Farrell y O'Gorman que vimos ahorita el, el cuadro de O'Gorman muy destacado en, en el museo creo que podemos tener un buen contacto este, creo que de, de, de sobre la declaración, la cual agradezco mucho que, que se hayan incluido algunas sugerencias que hicimos sobre todo nos llevamos una, una parte muy importante que me parece que a partir de ahora en todos los eventos de, de OIM, en todos los eventos sobre migración, debe existir un segmento de diáspora. No podemos seguir hablando solamente de flujos migratorios, tenemos que hablar también ya de nuestros migrantes que ya adoptaron otro país para vivir y que lo hicieron por decisión propia o por necesidad económica, pero ya existen, aportan. Y aquí lo vimos en el museo, en Irlanda es una gran muestra de eso, llevan siglos de migración y, 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 de recu y de recuperar este vínculo y el reconocer el aporte que hace la, la diáspora a, al país y, y, y llevarlo esto a, a nivel multilateral, a nivel de las organizaciones, creo que es muy relevante que siempre esté un espacio, un segmento para, para la diáspora. Y además, pues también agradezco que se haya incluido un tema que, que es muy relevante, sobre todo para pues creo que para todos, porque precisamente el ministro Murphy me, me, lo, Murphy me lo comentaba, que aunque ellos no tienen una gran población indocumentada en los Estados Unidos, sí tienen el problema. Me comentaba algo de decir como 60, 70 mil irlandeses con asunto de documentos en los Estados Unidos. Y nosotros tenemos 6 millones, pero creo que aquí todos tenemos población indocumentada viendo en otros países. Pues es muy relevante que lo hayamos reflejado en el documento y que tengamos atención especializada y demos seguimiento a nuestra población indocumentada. Y así como los temas de salud y educación que se incluyeron, que también es muy importante que tengamos la, este, la responsabilidad como países de buscar asegurar a nuestras diásporas y a nuestros migrantes que no tienen la capacidad ni el recurso en el país de acogida que tengan acceso a temas de educación y salud, como, lo, como ya lo hacemos y como tenemos que seguirlo haciendo, como una parte de responsabilidad del Estado, porque se fueron provocados también porque no, fu no fuimos capaces de darles lo que requieran en el país y estando fuera, algunos tienen el problema, hay que seguirlos apoyando. Pues muchas gracias por eso, muchas gracias a todos y pues gracias a, todas las, a todos los países y seguiremos trabajando en estos temas. Hasta pronto. Gracias. Muchas gracias, México. The Philippines, el ambassador. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would just like, as a point of reflection, to recall how far this journey has been. I myself uh, began this journey in the days of another great Irishman, Mr. Peter Sutherland, uh, 
when we took steps to actually the GFMD. And from there, we worked with many others on the Marrakesh Declaration and the GCM. So we view this as an organic development in the progressive evolution of our international consciousness as regards migration. You may re not remember that there was a time where migration was an invisible element in globalization. No more. Thanks to the efforts of the IOM and all interested countries. Uh, we would like to express our appreciation at this point to the tremendous efforts of the government of Ireland, which has shown such a visionary commitment to promoting uh, diaspora engagement, and of course the IOM. We are very happy with the Dublin Declaration and the forward-looking uh, engagements we have promised for the uh, diaspora. Our last observation, I'm so sorry, I don't know why this is so loud. Uh, uh, the closing observation is that diaspora engagement should not be something that we do to the diaspora. It is something that we should we work with the diaspora, and that spirit is fully reflected in the Dublin Declaration. So for this and all the other reasons that have been previously mentioned, we consider this to be an important first step and a pledge to one another that we will work in a way that advances our common interests in global migration governance, and in that context, to put the diaspora more with us in the driver's seat. So once again, thank you, Ireland. Thank you, IOM. As a Filipino, from the bottom of my heart, who, whose people have shared a lot of the Irish experience, we are deeply grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. You may remember the 2013 uh, Diaspora Ministerial Conference at the IDM. And um, now we have the opportunity actually to not let 10 years pass till the next time because we are hoping that we will be able to link diaspora reflections and engagement to each IMRF. And these are every four years. So we already reduced the time. And from then, to, from this IMRF to the next one, there is plenty of space to uh, discuss uh, engagements. And in fact, I mean, the, the document that we have in front is, as the DDG said, is a consensus document because we all know how important it is to contribute to the IMRF and to bring this topic strongly to the IMRF. And uh, the Ambassador Mexico was mentioning um, uh, education and health is important. There was a, a suggestion to add also housing, uh, and there were many suggestions made that could not be integrated in the document, but I think we have to see every point as one point that needs to be expanded, that needs to be filled, that needs to be discussed and brought forward. So this is just the summary of what we could fit, put in a two-pages document. And so thank you very much for your understanding and your patience, if not all the words and um, could uh, find place in this document. Yes, Mauritius. Thank you, uh, Chair. Your Excellency, uh, Minister Brophy, the DDG of the IOM, uh, Mrs. Daniels, uh, dear colleagues, we are drawing to a conclusion of our two-day uh, Global Diaspora Summit. Uh, in Dublin. I would like, uh, on the part of my delegation and my own self, um, place on record our appreciation and thanks to Ireland and the IOM for hosting organize, and organizing this important event. 
In fact, uh, I would, uh, our appreciation for Ireland is due to the leadership role which uh, the, this country is playing in uh, our quest for a, a better engagement towards our diaspora. We fully subscribe to the uh, to this uh, declaration, to the Dublin Declaration, and uh, it uh, encap encapsulates the different uh, statements made, the different opinions which have been expressed during our deliberations. And in a nutshell, this declaration uh, sums, uh, sums up all our commitment for a policy framework uh, in our diaspora engagement. Uh, so, without any doubt, this declaration brings, in fact, our engagements to, to new heights. Uh, and uh, undoubtedly, the Dublin Declaration is laying the foundation for our future engagement and pledge and our commitment in terms of meaning, a meaningful uh, diaspora initiative towards uh, achieving SDG 19. With these words, I would like once again, uh, Chair, to thank uh, Minister Brophy and the IOM for the commendable, commendable work they have been doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mauritius. Indeed, it brings our uh, engagement into new heights, and as Colombia also said, it's a starting point for uh, uh, invigorated engagement. Yes, Bangladesh. Thank you. Uh, whenever you come to the closing of a program, everybody has to take the floor to at least say thank you. <clears throat> but I've taken the floor more than to say thank you is that we have Come, down, uh, come out with the declaration. I want to emphasize that we are fully pledged to take this declaration forward to whatever end that we are looking for, to complete the agenda. That is the main reason why I've taken the floor. But there's another main reason. Mr. Brophy, the Irish government, all people of IOM who have been involved in the program, and particularly those whom we don't see, you know, people behind the scene somewhere, I mean, there are people there who have been doing all the main work to say thank you to them. Because I think this is most important in any teamwork. Everybody should get their fair share of thank you. Let it call it a collective pat on the back for all of us. And I think that is what is going to take the process fully forward. Points have been raised, points have been accepted, put in, drafted, etc., etc. Maybe all points have not been taken. It will come maybe in the IMF, uh, IMF, uh, IMRF uh, when it comes up in New York. But what we have to remember is that putting words into a declaration is not the answer. Using those words and coming to conclusion is the answer. And I hope all of us here, as we are committed to this declaration, that is what we will be looking for. I thank you all. Thank you very much for this word, and in particular for thinking also of the people who are not visible, who indeed, many of those I think have lost their sleep over the last few weeks to, for us to be able to be here and uh, to have such a successful meeting. So thank you very much. Yes, African Union. Thank you very much for giving uh, African Union uh, opportunity to thank the government of Irish 
for hosting us. We had a very uh, good hospitality since we, ca we came from the airport until to, to our hotel. Uh, on behalf of the African Union, uh, I would like again to thank the IOM for organizing this uh, diaspora summit. AU is keen about diaspora and migration issues. And at the level of the directorate where I'm serving is also uh, one of our priorities. As we speak about diaspora agenda and migration, I would like to emphasize with uh, our partner, ILO, uh, sorry, IOM, that uh, we look for a mature partnership. I know that uh, we still have a long way to go, but I believe working together in the interest of our people, our migra migration or immigrant and diaspora, both at the continent and then also outside the continent is very important to us. So once again, I would like to thank you all and I wish everyone a nice trip wherever your destination and let's keep in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, African Union. Yes, Kenya. Thank you, Minister Braffy. And through you, your entire government of the Republic of Ireland, the Deputy Director IOM, and please, pass our gratitude uh, to your director. I don't think he's with us here. Excellencies, leading members of various delegations, ambassadors, participants, including virtual ones uh, who are not with us. The Kenyan delegation expresses a deep gratitude uh, for the hospitality and the courtesies that were extended to all of us uh, since we arrived in this great country. And I would want to point out that this Global Diaspora Summit could not have been held in a better place than Ireland, which has unparalleled experience with matters diaspora and migration. Uh, we are all alert to the fact that uh, many Irish men and women uh, that left uh, the island have made great strides in those various countries that they've, they now call home, including the US. And so there would never have been a better place to start this very important and challenging process. Uh, than, 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 than here in Dublin. But the conference is also taking place at a very critical time in our history, a time when we are witnessing unprecedented events arising out of the Russia-Ukraine crisis with hordes of, and multitudes of people crossing through the borders. We note with gratitude the generosity of the European powers, European states, that have opened their hands to welcome those European, uh, Ukrainian families, including foreigners that were in Ukraine uh, that have been leaving the country. And we do hope that the world will learn and wake up going forward. So those migrants, those people that, for whatever reason, leave their countries and go across their borders will, continue, will, will be able to be received warmly 
as we have been witnessing lately, the horrors of the war notwithstanding. I was personally pleasant, surprised, I mean, uh, impressed this morning when I saw kids get into a classroom in Poland. And I think humanity must invoke its good sense to do what is right. I want to emphasize that we will be part of this process. As you know, Kenya is both a host and a transit country for refugees, for migrants, and for diaspora. We also have our own diaspora, including here in Dublin. And I would want to make it clear that we will support the declaration, and we look forward to working very closely with IOM um, uh, towards uh, uh, New York uh, to, to ensure that the sentiments that we have expressed this afternoon uh, or throughout the conference are adhered to. So once again, thank you so very much, uh, Minister, and the IOM Secretariat and the technical team that have kept us connected uh, with those that we needed to, including our headquarters. And I want to wish everybody a safe journey back to wherever you came from. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we look forward to working with you. Uh, Montenegro. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, uh, on behalf of Montenegro, I would like to thank our uh, um, Irish host for organizing this timely event and for uh, excellent organization. Uh, I think that this is very much timely event due to the fact that, you know, we are all witnessing what's going on in Ukraine, that millions uh, of people fleeing the country. So migrations uh, should be one of the topics, you know, that Nobody, nobody, you know, nobody could deny. So uh, I think that this document, speaking of the document, I think this document is a result of our joint efforts, and it's a, this is the first stepping stone uh, in uh, our joint action uh, towards better cooperation uh, uh, with uh, diaspora. Uh, speaking of my own country, you know, as I uh, mentioned yesterday uh, at the meeting with minister, uh, with the minister, uh, nobody knows how how many Montenegrins. Uh, live abroad. Uh, so uh, basically, given the, maybe it's approximately uh, uh, um, as two times or as three times of my own country, uh, they live abroad. So basically, uh, given the fact that we are 0 0.6 million people, we have, don't have that uh, luxury, you know, to relinquish any uh, of, of, of those. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, you know, definitely we support fully that that's written here in uh, in uh, the statement, and we really uh, look forward to cooperating together for a better cooperation with our with, our, with the diaspora. Thanks, thanks a lot once again. Thank you very much, Montenegro. Do we have any other statement? We don't have any online statements. Um, so, but in, we know that in addition to the, um, to the lead participating countries who have been participating in the summit in, uh, in person, we have started receiving confirmations from uh, uh, the countries who have joined us online. We heard uh, Turkey, but we also have uh, Armenia, El Salvador, and uh, Germany. And um, we, uh, we are inviting all the governments uh, who are online and across the world to really join the declaration in the next days and weeks. We will be keeping a list, and we hope that we will bring a very solid and large list to the IMRF. So keep uh, letting us know. I think there is an email, uh, the Secretariat. We will be issuing then the final list, and we will uh, call upon all the countries in the world to join the declaration. We will also share the proceedings of the, the summit as well as the declaration with the, everyone uh, over the next days. And um, yes, and with this, if there is no other statement, nothing online, 
I was looking forward <laughs> to some questions online and some yeah, hands don't, raised don't, online. Don't start, I don't, don't I don't, I don't. There is no time, there is no time anymore. So thank you very much <laughs> for your participation. Thank you very much for your support to the declaration. And uh, with this, I hand over to Nozi. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Monica. Really listening into those conversations and insights and uh, really appreciating the energy uh, bubbling to the surface. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for a final reflection ahead of the closing session, let's hear once again from uh, Ugochi Daniels, the DDG of the IOM. Thank you, Nozi. Uh, excellencies, dear friends, um, and of all participants online, I, I'll, I'll start off where I ended the last time, which is stating that it's our moment. We've heard, um, certainly for me, very inspiring uh, statements from uh, uh, ambassadors here, and I really want to highlight um, some the the spirit within which we have reached this stage and how we are going forward in terms of laying the foundation, the commitment to completing the agenda, and the, progress, the progressive evolution of our international consciousness on migration. And uh, that leaves me very inspired um, for the investment and time and all the hard work that has gone into, into this um, gathering. Uh, many of you, thank you very much for also recognizing the hard work behind the scenes. As my colleague Monica said, there are many people who have not slept over the past few days and, and weeks. They've kept us all connected, they've kept us fed, they've transported us, they've shared documents, they have They've really been um, working very hard. They've moderated. They've, uh, they've managed the IT very successfully. And, and I really do want to appreciate their contributions in getting us to where we are now. And so now, as IOM, we stand ready uh, to put our more than four decades of experience working with the diaspora at your disposal to support this very ambitious and visionary agenda. We'll continue to work with all of you and all our partners to deploy various global tools which we've developed to support exactly this type of collaborative work. So there are three things we can already offer based on your um, statements yesterday. First is the iDiaspora platform a global hub for diaspora and all those working to collaborate with them, which many of you have interacted with over these past few weeks as a virtual space to connect and convene with communities around the world. So that's the first one. The second one, we've developed a diaspora mapping toolkit to assist you and your partners to know your diaspora, their characteristics and their needs using a standard methodology which will allow us to compare data across communities at the regional and global level, and we're ready to work with you to implement this. And third, we've provided a guidance on capturing diaspora's economic contributions beyond remittances. It's called Contributions and Counting, which is already being implemented by our colleagues in Moldova. And this is just a few. We have more in the pipeline, such as a set of standard modules for capacity building. Many of you spoke about the need for capacity building um, yesterday. So we're eager to work closely with all of our member states and partners here today and online um, to continue to ensure that this extremely important agenda has the tools, skills, and support to take our declaration from commitment to reality. We look forward to meeting again in four years to celebrate our success and, of course, to recommit to the next four years of collaboration and cooperation. So on behalf of the Director General of IOM, Antonio Vitorino, and on my behalf personally, 
Um, I want to express my sincere appreciation and thanks to all of you.